Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Natural Super Kids podcast. Jessica Donovan here, and I am excited to dive into quite a big topic and potentially a controversial topic today um, about the Australian Dietary Guidelines for Kids. Now, this episode idea came about because one of our Natural Super Kids Club members posted within our private Facebook group that she had submitted a recipe, one of our Natural Super Kids Club recipes, to her school tuck shop. She wanted, you know, she, she was taking action and wanted to get more healthy variety um, onto her kids' school tuck shop canteen menu or tuck shop menu. Um, we call them canteens here, but I think tuck shop is really more a, more a widely used term. Um, I'm in South Australia. And this particular recipe, it was a berry bliss ball. It had raspberries and oats and seeds, a bit of honey, some coconut oil in it. And she was very surprised, hence her post in our club community, that this particular recipe was rejected as a red food that is not allowed in the school canteen. And the reason was because it had a solid oil in it, coconut oil. The recommendation was to swap that over to a healthier, in their terms, oil, a vegetable oil, sunflower oil. Of course, that's not going to work in a bliss ball recipe because the coconut oil helps to keep everything solid and together. And so it led to me talking about this on Instagram. Lots of conversations came out of this and I thought, right, this needs to be, we need to delve into this more into in, in a podcast episode. So if you hadn't heard that story before, if you're not a club member, if you hadn't seen that on Instagram, isn't that just shocking? You know, I know of plenty of school canteens that have things like Zupa Dupas on their menu um, and a whole food recipe with whole grains, fruit, seeds, and some coconut oil isn't allowed on the menu. Now, this is, you know, this is what we're up against as parents. Um, when we're trying to feed our kids and find convenient options, you know, we don't always have time to pack lunches um, or, you know, sometimes it's it, it, it's a good idea for us to be eating out and there are not a huge amount of, of healthy options. And these are the sorts of things that we are up against when it comes to um, the government guidelines for feeding kids and also, uh, you know, the, the school tuck shop guidelines as well. So let's have a little talk about, um, you know, the, the Australian dietary guidelines. So these have kind of been um, updated and I haven't looked at them for a while, to be honest. But remember, there used to be the, the food pyramid. That food pyramid is now a circle. And as I'm sort of looking at this, it is kind of quite general. So Australian Guideline to Healthy Eating, this is for children and adults, um, is, you know, a big circle uh, diagram with the advice to enjoy a wide variety of nutritious foods from these five food groups every day. The five food groups are grain, cereal foods, and it does say mostly whole grain and or high cereal fiber varieties. And that is, um, let's say, about a third of the uh, circle. And then we've got vegetables and legumes, beans that make up another third of that circle. And the other third is split up into three groups. We've got fruit. We've got dairy products, milk, yogurt, cheese, and or alternatives, mostly reduced fat. And then we have uh, protein, lean meats and poultry, fish, eggs, tofu, nuts and seeds, and legumes, beans. Um, 
And then underneath we've got use small amounts of oils and there's a picture of a tub of margarine, a canola oil spray, an olive oil bottle and a vegetable oil bottle. And then uh, only sometimes and in small amounts. And we've got things like alcohol. As I said, this is for both adults and children, lollies, you know, biscuits, uh, chips. Um, I think that's cream, burgers. Uh, so they're all just kind of pictures underneath. So it's a little vague. It doesn't give us a really good idea of what we should be feeding our kids um, and ourselves. I mean, it gives us a bit of an idea. I like that it is done up in a, um, a diagram, so it's very visual. Um, but it just sort of says, enjoy a wide variety of nutritious foods from these five food groups. I mean, the amount of room each of these, um, you know, like different food groups is taking up is is a bit of a hint as to how you know what they what they're sort of recommending um so that's that and then we have some specific advice for children via the healthdirect.gov.au website i will link to this so you can you can see it for yourself says something similar. Um, the Australian Dietary Guidelines recommend children should enjoy a wide variety of foods from these five food groups. Number one, fruit. Number two, vegetables, legumes and beans. Number three, cereals, including breads, rice, pasta and noodles, preferably whole grain. Number four, lean meat, fish, poultry and all uh, and or alternatives, and number five, milks, yogurts, cheeses, and or alternatives. Children under two should have full fat milk, but older children and adolescents can have reduced fat varieties. Um, it goes on to talk about how much food does my child need through each different food group, uh, age range, um, some ideas for how I can encourage healthy eating habits. You know, there's some good things in here, sitting together as a family at mealtimes, without screens, making healthy food fun, serve a variety of seasonal fruits and vegetables, learn together about how different foods are grown, let your child help with food shopping and preparation, try new foods and recipes, limit the amount of junk food you keep in the house and keep a bowl of fruit handy for snacks. Um, which foods should I limit in my child's diet? Um, it, it talks about limiting um, discretionary foods that are generally high in kilojoules, saturated fat, added sugars, or added salts. And there's some examples of foods that we want to limit, sweet biscuits, cakes and desserts, processed meats and sausages, ice cream, confectionery and chocolate, store-bought burgers, pizzas, hot chips and fried foods, crisps and other fatty or salty snacks, cream and butter. <gasps> Um, that is something I definitely disagree with, and sugar, sweetened cordials, and soft drinks. Um, so look, some of this advice is really great, and other um, advice here is quite questionable, but I, I feel like it's very, you know, general. It doesn't give parents, you know, a really clear idea, you know, as to what their kids should be eating. And I'll just go through a couple of the issues that I have with this information that I've just shared. One is the large amount of cereal and grain foods that are recommended. Look, carbohydrates are important for our children. Um, but in my opinion, they don't need to make up that amount, you know, of our diet that um, they shouldn't be making up a third of our overall diet. In my opinion, you know, protein um, is is very important. You know, those nuts and seeds and legumes and animal protein. Uh, and so that is one issue that I have. You know, I love that vegetables feature um, on there really widely, but, you know, we can actually do without uh, cereals and grain foods. They're not an absolute necessity. If we make up that carbohydrate intake with uh, vegetables, legumes, nuts, fruits, then they're not an essential need. So that is one area that is concerning. And the fact that it just says preferably whole grain, but you know, if it's all white stuff, that's not, you know, it, it doesn't make a big issue of that. Um, and we know from, you know, those white beige carbohydrates, 
uh, our kids are not getting a lot of nutritional value, particularly when when we compare that with a good quality protein. Um, They're getting a lot more essential vitamins and minerals from those kinds of foods. Now, I'm not saying, you know, that, that our kids should eat loads and loads of animal protein, but I do think it is an important part of the diet. And I don't think that is um, highlighted enough in the Australian dietary guidelines. So that's one issue I have. Another issue is is the, um, you know, the types of fats and oils that are recommended. Uh, and this was an issue when it came to the this, this particular recipe being rejected from the school canteen because it had a solid oil, which is high in saturated fat. Now, it's true that coconut oil is uh fat, a saturated fat. Um, But there are a lot of different types of saturated fats. And the other thing is that, you know, the, the more recent research tells us that saturated fats are not as bad for us as we once thought. And there's a lot of different types of saturated fats, you know, um, if we're talking about a lot of uh, processed saturated fat, that is very different from a small amount of saturated fat um, from coconut oil within a recipe. To me, it is mind boggling that foods, natural foods such as butter and cheese and, um, you know, meat is, is, is sort of talked about as bad for us because of the high level of saturated fats, while highly processed industrial vegetable oils, such as corn oil and soybean oil, is good for us. And this is what the Australian Dietary Guidelines still tell us, even though the research is, you know, really super outdated. So there was a um, a huge study done in 2010, a meta-analysis of prospective cohort studies evaluating the association of saturated fat with cardiovascular disease. And the conclusions of that were um, that there are no, there's no significant evidence for concluding that dietary saturated fat is associated with an increased risk of um, coronary heart disease or cardiovascular disease. And so I will link to this study in the show notes. Um, and when it comes to children, you know, when things like low fat dairy are being recommended, low-fat milk, low-fat yogurt are being recommended over the full-fat varieties, we need to understand that with the removal of the fat um, comes with it the removal of a lot of essential fat-soluble nutrients that our kids are commonly lacking, vitamin A, vitamin D. Um, And so when, when we don't have Uh, you know, good evidence that saturated fat is bad for us and our kids, and we're removing it and removing essential nutrients, um, it just doesn't make any sense. And if we go back to coconut oil, a plant oil, a saturated fat, um, the main saturated fat within coconut oil is lauric acid. And lauric acid has been shown to um, raise or increase HDL cholesterol. Now, this is our good cholesterol. Um, so, lauric acid reduces the amount of total cholesterol relative to HDL cholesterol. And to put in very simple terms, these changes are associated with a reduced risk of heart disease um, and cardiovascular issues. So lauric acid, the main saturated fat within coconut oil, has um, more beneficial effects on HDL cholesterol than any other saturated fat does. So it's not as simple as just removing saturated fat. Um, You know, even when the latest research tells us that saturated fat is not the problem when it comes to cardiovascular disease. But there's so many different versions of saturated fats. Uh, so it's not as sort of simple as this and as that. And I get when you're looking at regulations for school tuck shops or, you know, overall dietary recommendations for 
the public, um, you do kind of need to, um, you know, I guess classify things in into certain groups. Um, but I just it just infuriates me that something like a healthy bliss ball with whole food ingredients in it is getting rejected from school tuck shops when there are so many worse options. You know, the, the school tuck shops are allowed to sell things like pies, um, you know, that potentially have um, high levels of saturated fat in them as well. Uh, but something like a, a bliss ball with a small amount of coconut oil, it just it isn't allowed. It just doesn't make sense. The mind boggle. The mind boggles. Um, so when it comes to school tuck shop guidelines, things are categorised into green, um, amber, and red, which keeps things simple. Which I get is is necessary when it comes to again overall guidelines uh, for school tuck shops and canteens. So. In the green category, these are the things that should always be on the canteen menu. Um, And so in this list are things like in the drink category, low or reduced fat milk and soy drinks, plain and flavoured. These may contain intense or artificial sweeteners, which are generally not allowed on school canteen menus, but um, they are allowed in milks and yogurts for some reason. The other thing is that these intense sweeteners with artificial in brackets do uh, include more natural sweeteners like stevia and monk fruit, um, as well as artificial sweeteners. So again, the mind boggles as to why artificial sweeteners that have shown proven negative health effects are allowed if they're in dairy products. I'm not sure why. Um, And things like water, you know, are allowed. Coffee style milk drinks are only allowed in secondary schools. I mean, I don't know why they're allowed at all, but anyway, and to a maximum of 375 mil servings. Uh, Things like bread and bread alternatives are allowed in terms of the green category. Scones, pikelets, pancakes, raisin bread, fruit bread, um, uniced fruit buns, as well as all the different breads. Breakfast cereals are allowed. Um, it does say whole wheat biscuits, low in added sugar, higher in fiber, and without added confectionery. Uh, rice, grains, and pastas are in the green. Um, yogurt, custard, low or reduced fat, again. Um, and may contain intense sweeteners or artificial sweeteners. Uh, Fruit is allowed, vegetables and legumes are allowed, and lean meat, fish, poultry, and alternatives are allowed, as long as they are unsalted, unroasted, dry roasted. Oh, this is nuts. So that's interesting. It does say check your school policy regarding the use of nuts and products containing nuts. So in the amber category, when it comes to school tuck shops, are the full fat milk and soy drinks plain and flavoured. So these are um, categorised as select carefully because they may be too high in saturated fat and or sugar and or sodium. So this is this is this is a big problem because um you know these things are look are being looked at in an isolated manner. You know, they're really focused on saturated fat, which as I've shared is outdated in terms of that being damaging to our health. Sugar, yes, I get that. I, I definitely agree with that. And then sodium, um, salt, which I'll talk about in a moment. But they're really looking at, you know, those things as isolated ingredients as opposed to the food as a whole. Um, You know, breakfast cereals that are higher in added sugar are in this amber category. I don't know why we need to sell breakfast cereals at school tuck shops. I mean, unless kids are having breakfast at school. Um, And then we've got things like full fat cheeses, um, full fat dairy, yogurts, uh, dried fruit and fruit leather, fruit ice blocks fruit jelly desserts, ice crushes and slushies that are at least 99% fruit juice with no added sugar, um, which is interesting. Fruit ice blocks, 
uh, yeah, again, with 99% fruit juice. But I know of a lot of school tuck shops. I've, I've heard a lot of parents complain, um, you know, that their tuck shops are selling Zupa Dupas. So I don't think, you know, how strict are these things being policed? I'm not sure. Um, but when it comes to coconut oil, it seems things are being policed um, very well. Uh, meat products, so burgers, nuggets, sausages, um, you know, stews, casseroles, curries, lean processed luncheon meats, fritzes, chicken loaf, uh, cured meats, ham, bacon. They're all in this amber category. You know, we've got savory hot food items, savory snack food items, um, uniced cakes, muffins, and sweet pastries. So I get it. The icing can be where a lot of the um, sugar is, but it doesn't you know, it, it doesn't talk about how much sugar is in the actual cake or the muffin, um, you know, here in this list anyway. Uh, things like uh, low or reduced fat ice creams are allowed in this amber um, category. Milk must be listed as the first ingredient. Uh, fats and oils. So choose polyunsaturated and monounsaturated oils and spreads. For example, sunflower, safflower, flour, corn, soybean, olive oil and canola oil we talked about before, you know, these sorts of oils, um, apart from being, you know, um, not, not having saturated fat in them, they contain a lot of omega-6 fatty acids. And this is a problem because it leads to more inflammation in the body. And inflammation is a huge factor when it comes to our kids' overall health and particularly, you know, those, those kids' health um, issues and challenges that we see so much of these days. You know, eczema, for example, is inflammatory. So we want to be making sure inflammation levels are as low as possible. Um, and then in moving on to the red category when it comes to school tuck shops, we've got things like soft drinks, iced teas, cordials, sports drinks, flavoured mineral waters, um, sweetened waters, Intense artificial sweeteners are here. Uh, so any product containing intense artificial sweeteners, with the exception of flavoured milk, fruit yogurts and custard. Again, my mind is a little confused as to why it's re- why it's okay in those products. Um, caffeine and guarana. I talked about the fact that secondary schools can sell coffee style milks. Um, Fruit and vegetable juices are in the red category as well, uh, less than, that are less than 99% juice or added sugar. Jelly desserts, ice crushes and slushies that are less than 99% fruit juice. Icy poles and fruit ice blocks that are less than 99% fruit juice. Cakes and slices, uh, confectionery, deep fried foods, and at the bottom, fats. So cream, coconut cream, coconut milk, butter, Kofa, ghee, and lard are not allowed. They are in the red. So this is the main issue, um, I think, that I, that I have personally with the Australian Dietary Guidelines as well as the National Healthy School Canteen Guidelines is this, this idea that these natural fats that are saturated fats are not allowed, but the more the industrial oils, the highly processed, the high in omega-6 oils are allowed. Um, and again, you know, the, 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 they just really haven't kept up with the latest research when it comes to this kind of thing. The other thing to mention is salt. So we did, I did have a question come through as to why are we not allowed to put salt in any food in the canteen? You know, some foods just to require salt. I agree. You know, who wants to eat avocado without a little bit of salt or <laughs> eggs without a little bit of salt? So look, yes, high amounts of salt can be detrimental to our health. When it comes to salt, um, which contains sodium, which by the way is an essential nutrient, it really is um, a, a, a situation of keeping things moderate. Um, you know, salt, so a salt at a too high of a level is going to be a problem, but also salt at too low of a level is going to be a problem. And again, I guess they have to make these blanket rules, but I would guess a lot of the, um, you know, savory pastries that they are serving at the school canteen are going to be much higher in salt than um, something that they are, you know, making from scratch in the school canteen. And I think this is where another part of the problem comes in 
in terms of, you know, veering towards these more packaged foods um, and away from the the home cooked foods uh, or just avoiding things like salt or, um, you know, butter or cream in home cooked foods um, or foods that are that are cooked from scratch as opposed to, um, you know, choosing those more processed packaged varieties that when we look at the comparison are going to be much lower in nutritional value than something that is cooked from scratch. So um, it really, you know, the, as I've said a few times through this episode, the mind, the mind really does boggle at these recommendations. So there is a lot to go through when it comes to, you know, these Australian dietary guidelines, the National Healthy School Canteen Guidelines. I have highlighted some of the areas that I particularly have a problem with as a qualified naturopath. Um, Look, my recommendations when it comes to healthy eating for kids is to focus mostly on whole foods that are have have as little processing as possible. And this is something else that is really, you know, missing. There is a mention of whole grain where possible or preferably whole grain um, when it comes to the grain portion of a kid's diet. But uh, I think we need to sort of, you know, make that more of a focus. Uh, So, yeah, I like to use a hand kind of guide and your own child's hand is the perfect guide for this. So my recommendation at every single meal is to include your child's palm size portion of protein. Protein is really lacking from a lot of kids' diets, particularly in the you know, the the start of the day, breakfast and lunch. So we want to be getting some good quality protein into our kids' diets at every meal to keep their blood sugars nice and stable. That's going to help them, you know, with concentration and, and, and more stable energy levels while they're at school. We want to be including, you know, vegetables um, in our kids' diets at every single meal, a couple of handfuls of a variety of vegetables. And um, we want to be sticking to uh, whole grain varieties where possible when it comes to that carbohydrate source um, and also including healthy fats within each of our kids' meals as well. So that could be something that's included within the meal or the snack, like some coconut oil in a bliss ball, um, or it could be included within the eggs or the, um, you know, the, the meat that our kids might be eating at a particular meal, or we might need to think about adding in some healthy fats, some avocado, some butter, <laughs> um, some coconut oil, some nuts and seeds, things like that are, um, you know, really good sources of healthy fats. So um, I just wanted to finish with that to give you an idea of, you know, what my recommendations are um, in in contrary to the Australian dietary guidelines. There are a lot of good things within the Australian dietary guidelines, but I think a few tweaks um, could be really helpful. And as I said, uh, they really need to keep up with the more recent research. There is, you know, um, there is ample evidence to show that saturated fats aren't the problem when it comes to cardiovascular disease. You know, and I think if anything, we should be focused on really keeping that sugar intake down in our kids' diets, as well as, you know, artificial ingredients in our kids' diets, the additives, the sweeteners, um, and those sorts of things, and sticking to more whole food that is as close to natural as possible, straight from a plant, straight from an animal, um, and and making sure that our kids are getting a variety of foods to meet, you know, their their growing needs or their high needs for nutrients um, when it comes to their growing bodies. So I hope you found this conversation interesting. I mean, I feel like we could continue this um I will talk about the health star rating in next week's episode, um, which will be a great follow on from this. Uh, reach out to me on Instagram over at Natural Super Kids if you have any questions about this episode, and I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for joining me.
Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Head on over to our website, naturalsuperkids.com for the show notes for this episode, as well as a whole heap of inspiration to help you raise healthy and happy kids. I'll see you next week.